and welcome back to Under the Moons. In light of the PlayStation 5 showcase, we're going to be diving into a trailer breakdown for Astro's Playroom. Now, if you're an avid watcher of this channel, you'll know that there's a little place in my heart for Astro right next to Sackboy. So you can imagine I was rather happy with the games revealed. Now, I love a good trailer with busy shots all cut together with no scene lasting more than a few seconds. It usually means there's a lot of hidden details to find. So, let's break down the trailer for Astro's Playroom. First up, a little history as to what to expect for the overall game. With the release of the PS4, you could download The Playroom, a game starring the AR bots that demos various gimmicks the new PlayStation camera could pull off. It was good fun and a lot of people fell in love with the AR bots and the flying globe Asobi, named after Japan studio subdivision Team Asobi. We later saw the AR bots appear once again to give us The Playroom VR. This free to download game gave PSVR users several mini games to play with friends and one game that you could play alone. This single player game was Robot Rescue in which you controlled a little jacked up AR bot. Long story short, this mini game was loved by all and players let Team Asobi know they wanted nothing more than a full game of Robot Rescue. Enter my previous video here going into how we got the release of Astrobot. A hugely successful game for the PSVR that sits atop the must-have list for any PSVR newcomer. So naturally, players expected a sequel, and with Astro's Playroom reveal we got, well, not a sequel, but more of a vacation. While I believe we won't see a true follow-up to Astro Bot until the PSVR 2 is released, this game is harkening back to those previous playrooms, and the focus of this one is on the new DualSense controller and all its new fancy gizmos. But it's clear a bit more time has been spent on this one. And like the previous two playrooms, this game is free to play and will be preloaded onto the PS5. So with that out of the way, let's dive into breaking down the reveal trailer for Astro's Playroom. Straight away, we can see two AR bots playing around along with a beach ball. Now, straight off, I think we're seeing the transition from hub world to level, with this fan acting as the entrance to said level. For the first level reveal, we come to a desert island reserve with a glacier border decorated with those familiar shapes. Some nice birds with propeller wings inside of their uh, wings. We have some returning base level enemies from Astrobot. And while Robot Rescue and Astrobot both focus on saving lost AR bots, this one seems to have them happily going about their business without the need to rescue. We've got an AR bot laughing at another bot buried in the sand and a new enemy that my guess will be showing off the force feedback of the trigger buttons. I'm assuming R2 will be the grab button for this. So I assume looking at this, you're gonna feel some pushback in time with this enemy. Lots of things happening in the background here. We got a God of War being filmed, complete with a bearded AR bot. VR Playroom had a bot of war game cabinet. So there's some consistency with that. Some AR bots having a swim and what looks like a toucan chilling on an island over there. Now, I'm not sure if this will be a collectible animals, as in Astrobot, you could come across some hidden chameleons that unlock some challenges. So maybe that's something like that? Or it's just a toucan minding its own business. We then see Astro collecting a MacGuffin. Could be a bonus unlock or go towards an overall game-based thing. With that, we move on. A little fluff on feeling the world with the DualSense controller, which is said to have haptic feedback so sensitive it can feel like it's raining. And then we cut to Astro having a walk through a field whilst it's raining. So expect some nice haptic feedback for that part. Also, you're going to start to notice the world is made up of tech replacing nature. I love these data transferring grass blades. We then have Astro Bot going up against a windy cloud that's going to demonstrate, but well, I don't think this controller can blow at you. So maybe some more haptic stuff. In the background, we have maybe a fledgling of that bird boss from Astro Bot, who's looking at an AR bot waving a feather at it. Okay, also worth noting, the checkpoint system is back, meaning these levels will have a nice bit of length to them, not just a one and done area. There's also what looks like some towers of RAM with AS081 chips, a SOBI. Nothing to take from this other than the coin counter, which is really high, so either this is still a dev build or your coin count will be with you throughout the whole game. We now move on to a lightning level in the clouds, so maybe that windpipe is how we end up here. Straight away we see some winged evil Sony televisions, named replaced with Asobi, but you can just about make out the classic Sony font. And these coins are upside down, just thought I'd mention that. Also worth taking note of how the rain lights up with each lightning bolt. Some really nice lighting going on here with the new tech this generation. When Astro gets hit, we're led to believe there'll be some feedback on the controller, maybe more in-depth than the usual vibration. 
Back with the grassy place, we can see another collectible MacGuffin up there, along with a familiar lead that we'll get a closer look at in a second. In the background here, we have some smashable walls. Now in Astro Bot, you could headbutt these things using your own physical head, but I'm guessing these will either be a smack of the fist or some other means to break a wall. Astro's spin move is back, which is pulled off by holding down square to charge. There's also some AR bots down there, and if we're going down the reenacting PlayStation games like the Bot of War, I'm guessing this is Bloodborne, just due to the black hat and melee weapon. We then see Astro jumping on some classic disc readers found in all consoles. Some cable inputs there, although I don't recognize them. And here we are at that closer look of the cable. A classic PlayStation remote cable from the PS1 and 2 era. There's also this big LED face. We then have another PlayStation reenactment with an AR bot with some ratchet headwear, with I think a smaller bot on its head as Clank, or it might just be his hand. There's also something ominously moving over there. Could be something to do with Big Brother, who we'll see in a bit. Moving on, we now have an ice level with two AR bots ice picking. Jumping over the PlayStation shapes again, we find two AR bots fishing. Well, one's fishing and one's eating popcorn. One's making a snowman and there's a penguin. Now, I'm wondering if each level will have a unique animal we need to interact with. Also, that AR bot has love hearts for eyes. Some nice clipping. And now we come to what I think is again the hub world. Got an AR bot playing some PS1 with some classic black PS1 discs to the side. Something going on behind, no idea what. There's some data blocks behind the glass there, 8 megabytes. Now, going on this shot and the one before, I think there's going to be a dedicated area for each console with this one clearly being the PS3. That mural in the background showing the fat PS3, the wireless 6-axis, HDMI, and the PlayStation Network. Also a lot of rubber ducks, which must be in reference to Super Rubber Duck, a very early PS3 game. It was amazing. They're also dancing on the last iteration of the PS3 with the slidey disc tray. And there's the old PS3 camera just behind our friend here. Also, you can see the PS3 menu icons in some glass vats. Um... There's not a lot to take from this, it's just windy and sandy. Astro is then seen running from a big rolling GPU plug thing. I'm not so good with physical technical parts, but are these to do with the GPU? I could see the link that way. Anyway, fun to see things like this as it's like part of the hardware of the level coming for you. We then have the AR bot film crew reporting on some old images retelling the story of the dinosaur attack minigame from VR playrooms, with some more stuff going on over there. Now we come to the busiest shot of the whole trailer, in which we seem to be gliding down some data center as AR bots are seen flying past with trucks of 5 megabytes of data. And again we can see another PlayStation reenactment, which I'm going to go with Gravity Rush. We now have a nice shot of Big Brother, last seen in Astrobot, looking happy as ever. Also the inside of his mouth looks straight up like a photo of one of the old disc trays. We then get Astro pulling some cords with the PlayStation 2 loading screen in the background. These pillars weren't random, they would actually represent how much space you have left on your memory card. We also have a nice loading screen menu graphic to the right. Astro again pulling, utilizing the force feedback of the triggers. And out like some toast pops of PS2! Now I'm wondering if the goal of each level is to unlock the PlayStation, making it available to play with in the hub area. The Playroom VR and Astrobot both had these hub areas in which you could unlock more items for the AR bots to interact with, so I'm wondering if they're going to follow that up. Mid-editing this video, I was watching back the live reveal and realized there was this additional shot, which confirms my thoughts on this being the hub area of the game. You can see the fan level entrance we covered just there. Also, I'm wondering if this other level entrance will take us to the level with the LED face thing in. Other things I spotted was this big sleeping cube thing encased in a dome. There's also a moustached AR bot. And then there's this guy. It's also nice to see Astro using the controller as a hollow container hasn't changed. Well, that's that. That's the trailer. Let me know if you think I missed anything, and are you looking forward to giving this a go? Seeing how we all get this for free on the PlayStation 5, it might be one of the most played PS5 launch games. Also, what did you think of the PlayStation 5 console design? I personally love it when a design goes all out. I think we were all expecting something different when we saw the DualSense controller. Also, I think it's clear to say that PlayStation began their journey on this alternative design path when they created the PSVR. You could add it to that lineup shot and it would fit in perfectly. Right, well, thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoy this. It's a nice quick video I can get out for you guys. I'm currently working on a larger video in the same vein as the Simon Stalenhag one. 
but it's taking a good while due to trying to make a convincing entry point. Anyway, more on that later. Thanks for watching and give us a sub if you enjoyed that. I'm getting really close to 1k. And check out some of my scripted videos in the playlist here. They're all amazing videos, I swear. Alright, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time under the moons.